Hi, welcome to week three of our Black Rocket esports streams. Uh, my name is Robbie, and this week we're at Carroll Community College. Our two competing students today are Ryan and Travis. Before we get into the action, I'd like to remind our viewers that this weekend our tournament is about to start. At 4 p.m. Eastern Time, we're going to be giving away Amazon gift cards to the players who achieve the most experience this weekend. First place is going to walk away with $50, second place is going to be awarded second are going to be awarded $25, I apologize, and third place will get 10 So some incentive to get on today. Uh, remember to vote on today's game by logging in through blackrocket.com forward slash esports, selecting the vote button and entering the room code provided in the stream below. Um, make your selections, and you should see an animation playing behind me now that's going to outline that process. We'll be right back once both players are ready. Looks like Ryan's going to once again choose that vacuum block. That's pretty difficult to get around. Uh, there's a lot of situations, some tight areas. It's going to depend on the map that actually gets picked. But that could be really tough later on. Two-way cannon gets chosen, moving block after that. Those were both of Travis's picks. Now it's back. Action is on Ryan to choose that fourth and final block before the random is chosen. It's just 10 seconds to make his selection. He was eyeing that spike block before. That would be interesting. In combination with that vacuum, pretty pretty opposite, uh, you know, pretty opposite choice there. I would I could see that the fan being used with the spike, but in this case, the vacuum. I'm not sure how it's going to play out. Remember, both uh, opponents get to use both of the blocks that actually do get picked. So they have to really plan a strategy out for all four that are chosen here, not just uh, the two that they chose. There we go, we'll check what the random block is now. And it's spinning. Ooh, the lockbox. Okay, so players can have a key, and once somebody lands on that key, the box will open up and allow them to kind of pass by that situation. So now we're on to the building phase. Players both now will have three minutes. They can craft the map, you know, any way they'd like. First, let's take a look at Ryan. Let's see what he is building over here. The first block he's gone to is the spikes. So that was his last pick. I can see him placing a few up towards that red region, right in that valley. Now we're going for a few vacuums down by that lower right gem. From last week, there was a couple of tweaks to our game. Our developers do a great job of pushing out regular patches. So one thing I noticed is that the hammer you guys remember or have played this game before you actually have a hammer that um, you can choose when it's not your level to break the blocks that your enemy places down if something's really difficult to bypass they've actually increased that from three to five so now there's going to be five blocks that are going to be able to be broken by your opponent and we'll go check out travis travis going for those moving blocks i like the use of that two-way cannon on that uh gem on the bottom left hand corner i think it's gonna be really interesting to try to get around Guess they're gonna have the wall jump up on that left side of that uh, left side of that wall. Really try to avoid the spikes, then moving block and the cannon simultaneously. And if they're able to do that, they should walk away with that gem. I also think it's a nice mechanic. If you look, Travis actually put the spikes on the moving block. I haven't seen anyone do that thus far in any of our tournaments. That's a really interesting tactic. And he goes for another moving block just to case in that gem up towards that top region. Take a look back at Ryan. Ryan making use of that eraser tool. Doesn't like that moving block he placed. Almost a pretty similar setup to Travis. He's also going to use some moving blocks to uh, kind of barricade off anyway. That uh, that gem on the top left region, that red region. I see right now that the top right gem on Ryan's screen is still unguarded. Right in that yellow, almost orange region. It's important that in the three minutes, the players do get around to protecting all the gems, kind of building a pathway to say, okay, you know, I'm going to be able to get around it over here. I know the best strategy. As soon as it's my level, I'll get out the gate and get the gems quickest, uh, more efficiently, and then I'll be able to lose my opponent because I know where all the traps are and they don't. So they're just trying to figure out, you know, what plays the best to my strengths, you know, what obstacles am I going to be able to get around but might cause difficulty for my opponent. Take a look now at Travis. Let's check and I see the same thing. Those two right gems, one in that yellow orange region and one in the green down below, those are unguarded at this time. There he goes. He's actually going to use some moving blocks. I wonder if he's going to use them in combination with the spikes again. And he is. 
So spikes are going to be all over that moving block and that gem to the yellow and orange region. That gem down below in that green, still unguarded, which is no time left. So both players' time has expired. And we're just going to wait. The building process is about to begin. One update that was recently introduced to this game is players are able to choose a color. Uh, it looks like both players, or at least from I can see, they look like they've chosen the same very interesting. Right off the bat, we see Ryan picking up his first gem. We are playing on Ryan's level first. You remember those fans down in that green region. That's going to be pretty difficult to get. He's going to be making his way up, wall jumping, and going to be using those vacuums, and he's going to have to try to time it so he's able to get that gem. We'll see, now he's headed up to that blue region, almost into the red. He's going to be facing off with that double cannon. That's really hard to bypass in this narrow, narrow straightaway. And he's actually hit as our first environmental effect rotate is chosen. And we're going to take a look at Travis now, who actually gets hit on the back end by that cannon. Cannon causing problems for both players. Just 45 seconds to go. Both players have secured their first gem. And unfortunately, Travis gets hit again. That double cannon going right through those pipes, that's pretty difficult to time with your wall jump. If he's able to do it for the third time, and no, he just gets caught again. Very difficult, pretty frustrating. If I was Travis right now, I'd be looking at a different pathway. Uh, maybe get around these gems different. Lights out, second environmental effect chosen. He gets up there for the fourth time, it gets hit again. We'll see Ryan give it a go. He is hopping up there. Seems like he's going to have... Oh, better luck. No, he falls down. No player right now is able to just bypass that double shooting cannon. Shooting right through those pipes. Just seven seconds to go. It's a race to see if anyone can pick up a second gem. There it is. You can see Ryan just hopping to it. Not enough time. But Ryan will be in the lead right now as we move on to Travis's level. Travis is going to have to get ahead quick. We'll take a look at him starting the second map. Travis moving his way through that blue region right now. He is the yellow glob, if you aren't aware. I like, the, I like the colors both players chose. Excellent wall jump by Travis, navigating that blue region. We'll see if he's able to find his first gem. Looks like Ryan was actually able to grab one. Let's see, here he goes. Here's Travis going through those spike blocks. It's going to cause a lot of problems for him. He's the one who placed them down. It actually is going to cause him a lot more trouble uh, than it's worth. You see Ryan right now picking up his second gem, just extending his lead. And Travis just has under 50 seconds to try to make a comeback here. All those gems are so difficult, extremely difficult to get. He's able to secure one. Look at that double shooting cannon attached to that moving block. Once again, a really interesting mechanic we haven't seen in prior weeks. So players taking advantage of all sorts of combinations here with the objects that were chosen during the drafting process. Just 30 seconds left, slow-mo gets chosen. Players usually don't like this environmental effect as it throws off their tempo. As you saw right there, Ryan actually just got eaten up while he was down in slow-mo, got hit, hit onto a spike. And Travis finally just scraping up his second gem. We'll check right now. Ryan still has the lead by a considerable amount, just finds his third gem. Not sure if Travis is gonna be able to hang in there and for this one with just two seconds remaining. And that will be it. So Ryan walking away with the victory this time around. As always, a big thank you to Carroll Community College for helping us put this together today. Uh, remember to compete in our tournament that's starting at 4 p.m. Eastern time. You could win some awesome Amazon gift cards. Uh, thank you for watching and have a great weekend, everyone.